Good morning, everybody. This is Chris and Carol Green, and we'd like to welcome you to Fruitful Living. Good morning. Welcome. This has been such a great opportunity that has come to us to be able to stream live uh, with you each week. And the reason why we're doing this is because there are things that God has given us through the many years that we have been pastoring here in this community. And we felt kind of a need to go back into our archives and begin to replay some of those messages, those special words, because even though they were recorded five and 10 years ago, some even longer, we find that many of those messages are right on time and appropriate. Relevant. They're really relevant for what's going on in our world today. In fact, the word of the Lord says, this is from Matthew 11 chapter verse, uh, I mean, 13 chapter verses, verse 52. It says, this is Jesus. Therefore, every scribe instructed in the kingdom of heaven is like the householder who brings out of his treasure things new and old. And so scribe, those were those folks who were very, they were very learned class of scholars and uh, studied uh, Jewish scriptures and, and they were uh, copyists, they were editors, they were teachers. And so from that perspective, we kind of think of ourselves as being teachers as well. In fact, we're actually vice chancellors of a Christian institution and we're professors there. But the Bible says that if you are a professor or teacher who's actually uh, dis been discipled in the kingdom of God and the ways of God in his kingdom and his authority, then you're like that person who's the master of a house who's able to go back into their treasure and pull out things old and new. And so we kind of think that's what we're doing now. We're going back into our into our householder's treasure and pulling up things that God has spoken such a long time ago, but they are precious treasure that we need right here and right now. So we'd like to just to welcome you as we go on this journey uh, each and every week and over the weeks and, and even months to come and just share in this very special way with you. So uh, after this word that uh, you'll be receiving today. We'll come back together and we'll pray. All right. So here we go. Everybody, this is Pastor Chris, Pastor Carol. Glad to be with you guys uh, once again for another Family Prayer Room webcast. We got our church family, some here with us, and we're always glad to have the opportunity to share with you the word of the Lord. It's time for a special Mother's Day word. And my wife's got something very, very dear and precious with you uh, to share with you uh, this time. It's funny, we were talking a little earlier um, about uh, God and his patterns and, and uh, the patterns of his faithfulness in our lives. And that's basically what I want to talk about, um, uh, the patterns of God's faithfulness. Uh, so I want to take us on a little journey. My parents separated during 1970. My family was still reeling from the pain of it. On New Year's Eve night of 1970, my mother came to my bedroom, stood in the doorway, and told me that I needed to pray for my husband. That night, she planted a seed in my life. At the time, I really didn't know how to do that. I was 12 years old at the time. But it started the process of thinking about the things I would like in a husband. As I grew older, I began my process of praying and making a list of characteristics that I thought I would like in a husband. I remember a dream I had as a teenager about a man who loved me, who came to visit me at my mother's house. I couldn't see his face but I remember how I felt completely loved in his presence. Seven years, seven years later, I met that man in August of 1977, my third day on the campus of Oral Roberts University in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And three years later, we were married in 1980. Chris and I will have been married for 35 years in December of this year. We have three sons, Christopher, the firstborn, along with Jonathan and David, who are paternal twins. We have always wanted our children to have a personal relationship with God. 
Now, when I say that, the picture I had in my mind is of people who love God enough to do anything for him, who know when God is speaking to them and will follow him. People who aren't religious, but are passionate about God, who would acknowledge acquaintance with him, who would allow themselves to be advised by God, who would appoint him as Lord of their lives, who would assuredly walk in God's purpose for their lives, who would be aware when God is leading them in a particular direction, who would declare the word of God, who would be diligent in every area, who, we, who would be men of discernment, endued with God and his knowledge, understanding and wisdom, who would have regard and respect for God and be skillful in the ways of God. And those characteristics come from Daniel, the 11th chapter, the 32nd verse. These were things that I, that I prayed for my sons. Chris and I believed it was our responsibility to God since he gave us stewardship of them. We didn't own them, but he, God gave us stewardship of them as their parents to raise them in such a way as to facilitate or make it easy for God's purpose and destiny to be established in their lives. When we found out what God's purpose was for our sons, we had to constantly seek God for his understanding, wisdom, and timing. We also had to deal with age-appropriate behavior of our children, which meant learning about the different stages of childhood, adolescence, and teen years. It also meant a great deal of prayer, allowing God to teach us how to train our children. I found that I grew and learned as my children grew and learned. As a parent, I had an expectation, pictures in my head as to what my children would be like. While I was teaching my children what was inappropriate behavior and responses, I too was learning the same thing from the Holy Spirit. When Christopher was four years old, I was hollering at him about something he had done. I don't remember what it was now, but in the middle of our interchange, God said to me, is that how I deal with you when you're wrong? I immediately became very ashamed. I stopped in my tracks. I looked at the situation through the eyes of God and saw my crying, hurt son. I hugged him and apologized to him. Yeah, I apologized to my son, my four-year-old son. I told him I was sorry for yelling at him and calmly told him what he was doing that was dangerous to him and could hurt him. I told him that I loved him too much to see him hurt. After I hugged and explained to him why I yelled, he went on to continue playing. But from that moment on, I became a different parent. I tried from that point on to parent as I had and was being parented by the Lord. In my relationship with the Lord, I had come to see him and respond to him as my father. I believe that I was on a path of losing my son, but God stopped it before it even began. Today, Chris is married to a beautiful young woman who loves God and works at Home Depot as a team leader. Johnny became known among our family as the lazy genius. He's the oldest twin. He was in the fourth or fifth grade, and we have been trying to find a school that would not label him and teach him according to his learning style. One day, his teacher decided to test him with an oral high school math problem, which to her surprise, he answered correctly. From that point, we encouraged him with that incident whenever he felt he couldn't do something or learn something. God was faithful to show us who Johnny really was. Johnny is in his last semester of school and has exceeded his professor's expectations. He worked out a problem in one of the animation programs that no one had been able to solve. 
we would have family devotions once a week. During that time, we would play games like Uno or have our children act out Bible stories to make them more real to them. It was during one of these times that David, the youngest twin, yelled out, I don't want to be a pastor. <laughs> and we were surprised because we had never told him he had to be a pastor. We explained to him that you can serve God in many different ways, not just behind a pulpit. We reminded him of the word that came to him and his brothers about, about God's purpose for their lives. For David, all he could see was that there was only one way to serve God. He had to be shown and given examples of the many ways we can serve God. David graduated from Oral Roberts University with a degree in business. He's married and now has a position in the Canadian government in Edmonton, Alberta. There will be times when the Lord would say to me, you need to talk to David about such and such, or you need to give Johnny a hug, or you need to ask Chris how his day went. And each time he would have me do that, they would tell me something going on in their lives that I knew was the enemy trying to get a foothold in their hearts. And Chris and I would nip it in the bud. God was faithful to do that time and time again in the lives of our sons. God helped us to dedicate our children to the way they should go in order to fulfill the purpose of God for their lives so that when they are old, they won't leave it undone or revolt or become sour or be without God's purpose. God helped us to discern the God-given individuality and special strengths of our sons and to encourage them. God also helped us to train them how to make their own choices and how to make decisions in the light of God's word. Chris and I have been able to give them principles of the word, teach them how to pray, and to know when the Holy Spirit was dealing with them. He has led us to be at crucial deciding points in their lives to help them stay on track with God's purpose for their lives. I know God will continue to be faithful to do so, and not just for us, but for every parent who would allow God to lead them in raising their children. The Lord answered my mom's prayer in leading me to pray for my husband. The Lord answered my prayers regarding my husband and more. He also answered my prayers for my children. One other prayer he has begun to answer concerning my sons was inspired by my relationship with Mom Green, my husband's mother. I have been very fortunate and blessed to have a loving relationship with the parents of my husband. I don't think of them as in-laws. They are mom and dad. They have been awesome examples of godly parents for me. For years, I have been asking to have as good a relationship with the wives of my sons as I have with Mom Green, that they would be to me as my daughters, that our relationship would not replace the one that they have with their moms, but that our relationship would be a healthy, close one. I also prayed that my sons would be evenly matched with their wives, that their wives would be women of God, not religious, but have a personal, loving and intimate relationship with God. Women who wanted to fulfill his purpose and destiny for their lives and who would truly love my sons. We have had the joy of our youngest son, David, being married to his wife, Michelle, on June 15th of 2013. Our oldest son, Christopher, was just married to Antoinette on March 7th of this year. I have watched God answer my prayer first with Michelle, whom I've been able to spend time with and talk with. She's fun and feisty, and she and David are two peas in a pod. Antoinette is a woman of grace, and I'm still getting to know her, but it's obvious to us that she and Chris are well matched. I'm so grateful to God for them and that they want to have a relationship with me as well. At Chris and Antoinette's wedding, when we share with the couple, I was able to say to her, 
you are an answer to a mother's prayer. It all began with a seed my mother planted in my life during one of the hardest times in our lives, but God turned it for the good. And I'm so grateful to God for it. God turned it for the good, not just for our family, but several families have been impacted by my mother leading me to pray for my husband. I was the first of my siblings to marry. And for the Green family, Chris was the first to be married. And it's interesting to us to watch this pattern replay for uh, David's wife, Michelle. She's the first of her siblings to be married. And for Chris's wife, Antoinette, she's the first of her siblings to be married. And, and I don't think that's a coincidence. I think this is something that God is doing on purpose to help us to relate one an with better with one another. But it's, again, just to show you the faithfulness of God and how he answers prayers and how a mother's prayers are precious and they are powerful. And we thank God for his faithfulness in answering these prayers over the years, watching his process in our lives. God is faithful and we thank him and we bless him for it. And we pray that you will be encouraged by that, that God does hear your prayers and that they do make a difference when you pray for your children. They do, they do change things as you lead them and guide them in the ways of God. God bless you. Well, we certainly trust that that word spoke directly to your heart, to your home, uh, to your family, into your life. Um, only God knows that those things that were shared such a long time ago would have such significance for the hour in which we're living right now. Come on, let's pray together this morning. Lord, we thank you for this time that you've given us to be able to share together, to be able to uh, hear from you things that you gave us such a long time ago, and only you would know that it would have such powerful significance for us today. And we pray that every single word that was spoken will find good soil in every heart and every home. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, God bless you guys, every single one of you. Yes. We love you so much. And we really. really hope that you'll join in with us again next week as we'll continue on this journey together with fruitful living. God bless. God bless.